Welcome on people, it's Mr. Nice back again, again, part two of the stream, I'm really tired, but it's been how many days, three or four days till we knew this guy was coming to Forest, but today it's announced, not so far as <laughs> I've signed Toronto FC player, player. Uh, what's, his, what's, his, what's his name again? Richie Larea. Richie Larea. Richie Larea, that's his, that's his name, Forest have confirmed, because I've been waiting and waiting to do this stream, but it's been a delay after delay, but it's announced. So I've been wait, I've been wait, waiting four days. Is it three, four days you've had me waiting? I was about four yeah. days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've been telling these lot, Dylan, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But say it's been announced. Um, but I've got two special guests, Toronto FC fans, that's going to tell us lot what kind of player that the game and what what it's like playing football. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce to uh, Toronto Sports guy. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm doing great. Well. Little sad that uh, we've lost Richie Larea, obviously, but happy for you guys that you get him and happy to be on the stream. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and, and like I've got, I've got another one as well. And name is Ryan Anderson. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Tell you about how you have a gem of a player here and you're going to have a good second half of the season with Larea. Going to do as much as he can to put you to the playoff places and See what happens there, but y'all got a gem, so I can't wait to tell you what you got. Mm. Um, like I said before, come um, just do talk about people. Like if you are new to my channel, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and if you've got any questions for Talk Sport Guy and Ryan Anderson, put in the comments below, and we'll try and get through. And if you as well, if you want to be a member as well, people, there's a um, join button as well. Join it's two pound nine a month, and tr I'll try and get everyone on this channel this time. Uh, before we do get to talk to Sport Talks Guy and Ryan Anderson, uh, let me talk to Lee. Lee, it's been a long time. How excited we've got this player in t at last! It's just nice to have someone who can play on the left, isn't it? That's a permanent signing. We, we normally used to put in like round pegs in square holes, or vice versa. So obviously, he's mainly a right back, isn't he? But he can play. On the left side and the spots there for he can play both. Track. Yeah, so for me, it's just nice that we've got a permanent player in there. You know, uh, Dylan, how you feeling Dylan, about it? New signing? I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. Ever since we have heard about him, I've done a bit of research, been watching a <laughs> few videos on him. Document. I seen a documentary yesterday of him. Do you know what I mean? It, he, he seems like one of these players that's just going to come to the championship and hopefully touch wood. He's gonna, he's gonna make a mark. Right. So first, I, let me go for Toronto Sports Guy. Like I said, these two, play, these two fans, they know load about our new signing. So Toronto Sports Guy, go ahead. What do we know about our new signing, Richie Lu Luana? Well, Richie Larea is, he's a guy who had a bit of a late surgence into being a like star player in his career in major league soccer because when tfc picked him up in 2019 he was 24 he had been put on waivers was a free agent after orlando city dropped him and basically we just picked him up because he was like a cheap depth piece in mls and we moved him from the midfield greg vanny moved him to right back and it revolutionized both his game and tfc's game he's incredibly fast with the ball he's just speedy all around fantastic dribbler great vision from the right back side and on the left back side too he can play both sides of the full back roles he has just fantastic dribbling ability he scored a mls goal of the year candidate yeah. goal against columbus crew back in 2020 it was absolutely beautiful where he dribbled around like three columbus defenders slipped the ball past the keeper he's just absolutely fantastic and he's a guy who he steps up his game to play at the level of his teammates i know there's some guys who like when they go on international duty and they play with higher and they're like playing with higher level guys compared to what they might play with at their club team they you know leg behind richie larea is a guy who when he goes to the national team and plays with jonathan david and alfonso davies he fits right in you don't see any difference between him and those guys he fits right in regardless of the level of team that he's playing with he just always is able to take his game up to the next notch and be a factor on whatever team he may be on mm. um ryan uh, how do you feel like I said he's left your club but are you a bit sad that he's left the club for me, I think Richie, of course, he's going to get a start whenever he can play. 
He can't play on Sunday against Arsenal, but he gets to start as soon as he comes in in the championship. Honestly, for me, the way he plays, I believe he takes the starting spot. I really do. Before, is it Lions? No, Millwall. Millwall, yeah, Millwall. Yeah, against Millwall instead of Lions. Yeah, against Millwall, Millwall he starts. Yeah. But there's an injured Lions. left back that you have. <laughs> I think Larea takes that starting spot easily. I don't think he's here to be depth. I really don't. The way he plays, he's a strong player. He's easily gets the other team wind up. You hate to play against him. He's a great player that's just so easy to just slot in. He wants this chance. This has been his dream to go to Europe. And he, I think he takes a starting spot. I do mm. not see how he does it. The way he's played, everything I've seen him do for since 2019, I've been a fan of him very quickly. I became a fan of him very quickly because I have to believe in a player to be a fan of them when it comes to my team or Canada. But when he got when he kicked on, he kicked on. It took him a little bit to get over in Toronto, about like five games. But ever since then, he's just been on the mark, great player, and everything he's done. He has just grown so exponentially, and I've believed in him ever since because he's great at putting the ball forward. He can defend. He can attack. He gets people wound up. He's honestly way better than championship quality. I thought he would go to Italy, frankly. So what he will do is bring a lot of experience and a lot of belief to this side, and he's going to help them defensively and offensively. Definitely will probably get them to the playoffs. If they give him a chance, he's going to be a starter. And honestly, if they get to the playoffs, I, if they have a good striker, I mean, of course, that matters, and a good front line. But I could see Larea carrying this team very far and maybe even to the Premier League if they get to the playoffs. Wow. Um, let, me, let, me, let me get through to – let me get through the leap. After, after hearing that leap from Ryan, how are you feeling? Ryan better stay in touch because we need to hold him to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're not watching because that's some big, big pressure on the lad. But no, it's, do you know what? It's nice to hear people that are confident in a player. I mean, I don't know how much championship football you've seen over where you are, but it is a, it is a very tough league. So if he can do what you're saying, he'll be uh, very much welcome here, won't he? Like, we're crying mm. out for someone like that. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. I wish he was playing tomorrow, to be honest. But, yeah. Dylan, how do you feel about what, what Ryan said? And as well, t t Toronto sports guy, how do you, feel, how do you feel, Dylan, about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, f I'm feeling really positive. Do you know what I mean? This already with the signings we've made. But this this one, for some reason, I've just wanted it so bad. Do you know what I mean? Just seeing his pace and listening to his backstory of what he's had to go through to get to where he is. And mm. that's, do you know what I mean? That's desire. And to, to be able to, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but obviously the Toronto fans will know that he, he had the chance when he was younger to play for his home time club but he, he told him no I want to go somewhere else first and he went to learn his craft somewhere else and then ended up coming back to him and became the player he already he is now and hopefully what we've seen and what we're hearing hopefully he can bring that straight into Forest yeah. and help the team with the front with the front players we've got if he plays the way Ryan says he does with the front players we've got I think we're going to be an unstoppable team this season we need that niggly player. If he's as niggly as you say, that's what Forrest like. We've got bite, but we don't have that player other than Lyle Taylor when he comes on that winds the opposition up. If he's that type mm. of player, he'll fit in quite well. <laughs> mm. I think, to be honest. Um, people, like I said, is it, if you've got any questions for Toronto Sports Guy and, and Ryan, please put in the comments as well. If you want to do a super chat as well, put a super chat question as well to the boys. Right. Next question for Toronto, and I'll, I'll say one to Toronto and one to Ryan Anson. I'll say to you, Thomas Guy, what is the strength that um, he, he has got? That Richie Larea has got, well, I think my biggest like factor of liking Richie Larea is just he is a guy who you can tell every time he's on the pitch that like he cares about this game possibly more than anyone else there. 
they're mm-hmm. like he's famously anytime there's any sort of altercation anywhere on the pitch, he's right in the middle of it for the national team and for Toronto FC. There was a famous game for the national team uh, back in 2019 when we beat the U S in the CONCACAF nations league at BMO field in Toronto, where at one point there was like a, all the players were in a scrum and Richie Lorraine was right in the middle of it and our goalkeeper Milan Borian had to come and literally pick up Richie Larea and carry him out of the scrum because he was already on a yellow and they're worried about it but he's just the type of guy who will always back his teammates up will always just be a presence in and around everything I don't know how familiar you guys are with the term of CONCACAF football but Richie Larea one reason why he's been so good for Canada is because he is the perfect like he's the epitome, the perfect player for CONCACAF football in terms of just being able to draw fouls when he needs to draw fouls, being able to tough things out when he needs to tough things out. He's just a guy who he doesn't, he doesn't shy away from oppositions playing tough. He doesn't shy away to referees not making the right call. He just takes it all in and it just makes him better. Uh, Ryan, what, what's the weaknesses that he's got? For me, it's the fact that he could be too, have too much of a temper because he could get people wind up. But just like Stavro said to me, it's possible that he gets so wound up that he gets himself in trouble. And in England, I'm not so sure how they press it, but CONCACAF, you get away with a lot more because of how wild west it is. I'm not so sure. He does get other people wound up, but if there's an altercation, of course he's in it. And I just don't know if that's going to hurt him. That's the one thing that scares me because he winds people up, but he also goes balls to the wall. And especially this past season when Toronto was so bad, he was getting a yellow at least every other game. And also with Canada – it, it fell over there. So I don't know if that was because he was having, he was flustered and he was trying to do so much to try to help the team. He was flustered and it kind of bled over. Or if he's just going too far with trying to wind people up, that he's winding himself up at the same point. That's the one thing that really scares me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this is a good question for you, Ryan. Um, Ryan, how would you compare the MMS to, English, to the English team? Is it Premier Standard or Championship Standard? So what's the, what are the standards like in your league? I would say overall the MLS is mid-tier, high-tier championship. But I would say the high-tier MLS teams, your Torontos when they're actually good, your LA Galaxies, Atlantas when they're actually good, when they're actually good and MLS teams are firing on all cylinders, I would say they're able to survive the Premier League. But overall, I'd say MLS with the lower teams who don't like to spend, who try to just follow the salary cap and be lucky and win MLS Cup that way, your New Englands and such, championship, middle championship standard with them weighing everything down, like overall, I'd say middle championship playoff standard MLS would be. Okay. Um, I'll give this question to Toronto Sports Guy. Um, and this is from Glenn. Shout out to Glenn, who's a member as well. If you, if you want to be a member, people, it's two pound ninety nine a month. Uh, so for you, Toronto, um, what do Forest coaches and Steve Cooper need to take Richie to the next level? What does what do you need to improve technically? I mean, that's one where, like, when you come in from the MLS point of view, like Richie Larea, there's not much that you'd really improve to his game in major league soccer, but going over to Europe, I think when everything's, I think everyone just being a bit better, it's just going to be more about getting him used to the fact that there aren't going to be glaring holes in the opposition teams that he can run straight into and exploit. It's going to be, I think they have to like, at times make him be like, almost like, okay, like slow things down. You can't like sprint in to every single situation, like take a time, take a couple more passes, do a bit more buildup. Because one thing about Major League Soccer play is it's very linear. There's not a lot of possession controlling, passing it around. I think getting him more used to potentially a more possession-based game and less of a linear style of play is where kind of the coaches are going to need to look at with him. 
Mm. Um, I'll give this to Ryan. Um, would you say better going forward or defending? Shout great, Coco. Honestly, I would say forward. Like he's a good defender, but his most of his value is from coming forward, putting the ball forward, making those runs for the wingers and the strikers. He's a good defender, but it's mostly going forward that really makes him the player that he is and makes him the name that he is. Of course, he can't run into everything, as Stavros is saying, and he's got to get used to a possession-based game, but I still think he's going to have that forward ability in the championship. I think he'll figure it out. Of course, he'll have to defend more in his first couple of games, but I think he'll start wowing once he understands, okay, I have to be more opportune here and figure out how to break down this defense, but I can still break it down with my pace. But I also have to realize it's not like glaring open holes that they're going to give me. I'm going to have to make it myself. So that's what he probably would have to think, of course, paraphrasing. But I'd say offensively instead of defensively. Hmm. Lee, um, I think it was Ryan spoke about the temper problem. You, like we know the championship is really hard, Lee. Yeah, so, it's feisty. It's a feisty league. Um, yeah. Do you, do you think he'll cope? Do you think he'll cope with his temper? Like yeah. That? Well, you know, you've got to give him a few games. He might pick up a few yellows. He what he's got to do is learn the boundaries and how the championship works, as opposed to the MLS. Like you say, it's you can you might be able to get away with stuff more there. We don't know. But Cooper, this is what Cooper does. He man manages people. That's his job. And he'll have Cole back. He'll have all the experience that there is around him. Worrell, because they won't stand back and say, oh, you know, just let him do it. They'll tell him how, how it should be, you know, but he'll fit. I think he'll fit in perfectly like that. If he's got that mm. little bit of edge to his game, you know, that can be managed. You'd rather mm. him have that edge than have no fight at all, wouldn't you? So I, I think mm. he'll be fine. Once, once he gets his head around how it works, I can't see it being a problem. Mm. I think you mentioned again as about going forward as well. We've got players like Spence, who likes bowling forward, and having him on the left-hand side bowling as well, it's going to be fantastic, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definite, definitely. Well, like you say, you've got you've got Spence one side. You get, Hopefully, we're going to have him up the other side. Then you've got you've got the likes of Jono. You've got the likes of Graben. You've got the likes of Zinconagel. You've got all them, all in the middle. Do you know what I mean? If... if he, 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 if he produces what we are led to believe he can produce, then I think he'll fit straight in. But like you say, he's going he's gonna to have to learn. Do you know what I mean? We've got to give him a few games because I believe that the championship's going to be a lot. It's going to be an eye-opener for him. Stepping from the MLS to the championship, it's, it, to me, it's more physical. It's, it's the... It's, Apart from the Premiership, it's the next stage, isn't it? It's the next stage to get to the promised land, and that's why it's probably the probably the fifth fifth best league in the world. So I think with all them other players around him, with the likes of your Zinc and Eagles, your Johnsons, your Grabbins, um, players like that, I think if he if he produces what he can produce, it, it, it's gonna. It, I, this next six months is going to be hopefully magical, but we're putting a lot of pressure on a on a lad who's just come from a different country to a different league. Do you know what I mean? But it's make or break, not for him because he's got a. I think he's got a three and a half year deal now. Yeah, yeah, three and a half. Yeah, yeah three and a half. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, in a way, he's got to get. He's got to have some time to bed in. With the way we think we're gonna go, he's gonna have to hit the ground running in a kind of way. But like, like you were saying about his temper is, and that, I, like you say, with the likes of Warrell, you're gonna have Cook, you're gonna have um, Colback, yeah. McKenna. We're gonna have them kind of players who are gonna say to him, just calm it down. Do you know what I mean? We've already got one player in the team that gets a yellow card every time. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> Dylan's on about Lyle Taylor. So if that's what you're talking about, right? It used to be Colback. No, no I'm on about Colback. Oh, oh Colback. <laughs> Jack Colback. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Saying this, all this with his temper, do you know what? If he does end up playing against Darby, 
that'll be a, that'll be a game to see temp because that's where the tempers fly for anyone. Yeah. So that will be a game to see where he, where he is with his temper. It couldn't be under a better manager though, could it? To guide oh, him no. into the English Definitely. game. Definitely. Um, uh, people, I said well, um, we on Twitter a minute. There's eighty-eight people in. Please do hit the like button. Um, I'm gonna ask a Toronto sports guy, like. Boris fans have been excited for this guy to come. What's he like? Like, I know he's very active on social media. What's he like interact with uh, football fans? Is he like, is he really like engaged with fans? Yeah, generally he's been, from TFC's point, like for TFC, he's one of the guys who's pretty, pretty in there with the fans. And like, especially that also carries over with his uh, experience on the national team because I, that just puts him into like the limelight a bit more and like into more opportunities to like really be out there. And he's a guy who like, it, it's clear he loves the fans and he just like takes the opportunity. Like, I, like, you know, after every game, you know, there's some players who you know, will walk off the field, not really acknowledge the fans. He goes around, he's like making sure everyone in the supporters section like sees and uh, knows that like he's fully acknowledging that he's there and that like, and he knows that they're there. So, and like, he's one of the guys too, like when they get there, when they get their drum out at the game, he's, he's always wants to be the guy um, banging the drum for the fans at the end of the game. So in terms of fan interaction, like on TFC, that's part of the reason why we love him so much is he's just one of the best guys for just kind of embracing us as the fans and just really like letting us know that we're a part of what they build every season. Um, right, I've noticed he can dance a lot. So if he scores a goal, he's got a little bit of a celebration, on not he? Yeah, like I remember when he scored against DC United in the playoffs. Wait, 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 wait. That's, that's, I don't know if Lee or Dylan knows, that's, was that against Wayne Rooney's side? Yep, yep, Wayne Rooney. Yes. The last game he yes. played in MLS. Yes, so, so I think when Forrest played Derby, he'll know who he is because I think he did that, that celebration if um gets way really sad, so I think Rooney will know who he is when it comes. So um yeah, so carry on, Ryan. Carry on, carry on. What did he do? Like, what Ryan, what, what did Ryan, what did you do? What celebration can you, can you do it for us? What celebration did you do for us? It was like the whoa. <laughs> the what? I think yeah, that was like so 2019. I think I may have forgot a little bit, but I think I got the gist of it. Uh so it seems like can I just ask, what are attendances like at um, Toronto games? Like, how many thousands of people? Pre-COVID and when they were good, like from 2016, 15 to 2019, it was about 25, 30,000. Like, they no, packed the stadium. Good. It was always packed. Yeah. Sadly enough, COVID happened and the team sucked once they got back and they could have went to, like, 15, 20,000. And it was – Barely packed. Besides the Justin Morrow, the Decision Day game when Justin Morrow retired, he was a legend in his own right in Toronto. It, but when they're good and when it's able to be packed, it's packed. Mm. Wow. To the brim. I think uh, people in comments. Are you excited with the new sign? I'll, I'll, I'll get to Lee until in a minute. But um, <laughs> a question for both of you boys. Like as you know, he stands for his. But this question from Nick. Have we got new two, have we got two new Forest fans? Are you going to support us for Forest now? I'll now be we, paying we, attention. I'll be I'll get no, no, a Forest no. Lorea kit. I'll be paying Lame attention. Red. Because I've already <laughs> had some Forest fans see my video about Lorea on my channel. So and they've said I want to see you in a Forest kit. I know I already look good in red, so I'll pick one up. I'll pick one no, up no, no. and I'll I got ESPN listen Plus, so I'll pay listen attention. To, listen to me, Matt. If you want a Forest top, I'll get you one. To support the club, I'll, I'll put your daughter in the back so you know who, what my channel's like. So, mate, so if there's any Canadian fans trying to find FC fans, come and support my channel, man, because I, I will bring you content. You'll see my mug face on there, you'll see Lee's face, you'll see Dylan's face on this channel. So, try to support guy, and you've got to support the Matty Forest because th I think this signing has made is like I I'll speak to Dylan and Lee about the new signings because it's mad. I think. It's so early. It's, what, what date is it? Is it the eighth? And we, 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 we yeah, secured, eight. secured, we secured four signings. And let me, I, I'm gonna ask you, Ryan. Like, I, I've seen that like, you wanted to offer him a new contract, didn't you? 
but he rejected it. What was it the highest paid contract? We rejected didn't didn't it? Yeah, I think if you're talking about your team, I think that's one of the Larea be one of the highest paid contracts. Now if you're talking about Insigne who went to Toronto, yeah, that's that's one of our highest paid contracts of all time. But we've both had a very uh, when it comes to Toronto and Force, we both had a very busy window. So it's been very like everything just going forward with news been noticing. It's, it's very hard to follow, not hard to follow, but it's just like this here, this here. It, it's, it's been crazy, I'd have to say, and it's been enjoyable. I've never seen a window this mad, frankly, when it comes to MLS, because let me explain something. When MLS has a window, it's it's very slow. You either have somebody using you for getting their player more money or the deal's already 75% done when it comes up. It, it normal and it's very slow. It's like one big rumor and then like just random you get this person from the re-entry draft, you get this person from the super draft. It, it's very slow. So for what this offseason is, I've enjoyed it. It's been enjoyable. But it's been very high paced and it's very not normal, I'd have to say. Um, oh, yes. Ask, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. 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 Yes, yeah, so I think it was actually a 975000 a year contract, which would have made him the highest paid fullback in Major League Soccer. And this is a league where for a non-designated player, which each team gets three designated player spots, yep. the maximum contract value is $1.5 million. So he was offered almost a million dollars for four years, which for a defender in Major League Soccer is almost unheard of. Like, this this would have bar down probably made him i think the second highest paid canadian in mls is what it would have made him and the highest paid fullback in mls so the fact that he turned that down to come to nottingham shows you that he really wanted to go to you guys he really wanted to go to england wow well that, that's it's mad man uh, there's there's 100 people in it thank you very much for the 100 people that um come to watch my channel but like i said as if no one knows not so far as i've signed which is straight off from Toronto FC. And I've got two Toronto FC fans, Toronto Sports Guy and Ryan Anson. I will talk about their channel before we do, before they go, because I want to carry on and talk to Dylan and Lee about the signings. Um, Toronto Sport, well, before, let me talk to you first. Like, you've got a channel. Can you just tell everyone about your channel, please? Yeah, so uh, my channel is uh, Toronto Sports Guy. Is it going off? As this is my name on YouTube, uh, I talk national team and uh, the Canadian Premier League. So anything Canadian football, if you're interested in any of that stuff at all, I mean, I've just made a video on the TFC and Singe signing, and I've been like following, of course, the whole uh, Canada, where we're currently first place in CONCACAF, and we have the window coming up this January, where we play the U.S. as well as Honduras and El Salvador. So... Uh, if you want to see more Canadian football stuff, follow the Canadian men's national team, any of that, and, you know, see how Richie Larea does when he's over for the Canadian national team. Come, oh, yeah, he's uh, as well. Subscribe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, come subscribe yeah. to me, uh, Toronto Sports Guy. As well, I'll, I, will put, I will put both channels in the link below so you can subscribe. Uh, Ryan, that's as well. Tell them about your channel. It's Ryan Anderson, like my name is in the window there. If you have to add Toronto to it, go ahead. It may work. I don't know how high I, how high I am up in the rankings. But my channel, I cover TFC, CONCACAF, Champions League, CONCACAF League, MLS playoffs, CONCACAF Nations World Cup qualifying, Canada fan, Toronto fan. So, of course, they get a lot of the videos. But I'll do other teams once – Champions League, CONCACAF League, or the MLS Cup playoffs come around. I do a lot of live stream, watch along reactions, also review matches, have a little bit of comedy in there. I try to be funny sometimes, whether it's just things I find funny or anything else, any other people find funny. Also, sometimes talk about college football, Mississippi State fan, but I will be talking about the national championship on Monday, not that anybody cares because nobody watches college football over there in England, but <laughs> at least that'd I be don't. funny. I don't. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but 
I also talk about other sports as well sometimes. Sometimes I'll talk about hockey. Sometimes I'll talk about American football. Mostly it's real football, soccer, as people over there like to call it. I, I try not to unless it's like Canada soccer or football. Major League soccer. Football. It's football. football. I agree. Football. Football. I agree. I agree. I just said I, I don't like saying the S word unless I have to, okay? I say football too, okay? Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, not to sports. Uh, Twelve to sports guy and Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for um, coming to the channel. But like I said, uh, they don't go. I still want to hear. But like I said, people, I will put the links below so people at the end of the show. I will like I said, people subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I like to promote other people's channel. But like I said, Ryan, I'm Twelve sports guy. You are two new Forest fans because like I said, you've got to support the Angel Club. It, it could be our season. But like I said, I look, I look to get you on again end of the season. And talk about how um, how it's been. For sure, we'd love to show up again. But yeah, but like uh, it's been a pleasure, and I, um, like, I'll speak to you soon again. Peace and love, people. Uh, right, so it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Like I said, people, um, I said, I'll keep on. I'll keep Julian and Leon. Um, I can spot of you, Lee, and it's been mad. We've secured four players so far, and it's only. The, What's the date today? It's only eighth. The the eighth. eighth. And I'm we'll starting you. Like, as well, people, comment below. How are you feeling about this transfer window? It's been absolutely mad. It's refreshing. It's refreshing, isn't it? it? Rather than panicking to the last minute and then just getting anyone we can get hold of. It's nice to actually have a plan can... in place and you can see where he's going with it. He's filling all the gaps in, isn't he? Where he thinks we. We need filling in, so I'm hoping maybe another striker, maybe hopefully Wallace if he can come in as well, Jed Wallace. So it's it's just nice to get it done and get a, a team settled, isn't it? Rather than trying to settle them all in come February because you've only just signed them last minute, you know. Mm. So especially with Dylan, COVID you, and everything, you know, mm. you need the players, don't you? Uh, Dylan, how are you feeling with all this early transfer? I, I do you know what I can't, I can't remember the I, I don't think I can ever remember the first day the first day of the transfer window bringing someone in do you know what I mean we're eight days into it and we've got well we've got three players in two on loan well four in total so two on loan because we've obviously kept Spence and um, two permanents and there's possibly some more to come in by by the by the middle of January we could be done. And we'll be before sat there the, before the moon walking. Hopefully, that's, that's hope, mad it is. hopefully, but we've oh. still got we've got who is it? Wallace, we're looking at, supposedly. yeah. That, 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 that's why I want to say about like I know we've been linked with Lee Wallace and another player, but um, we sort of you, Lee, like how many players do we do we think we need? Like, how many more players do we need? I, I personally think we need two, but yeah. Lee, what, there's a lot of people in the comments. What, what position we need a winger and a striker for me. If if we get Jed Wallace, get him in before the Millwall game, it'd be quite funny for him to play against them, wouldn't it? Coming straight here and then playing them. Um, mm. Another striker, a goal scoring striker, because nothing against Davis. We've not seen him play. Obviously, you, you read stats, but he's here to hold the ball up and connect to bring the players into it, isn't it? Which is no mm. no disrespect to Taylor. He falls over quite a lot, so yeah. I, I'm hoping. Um, Davis can hold the ball up and feed it off and even chip in with the odd goal. But I do believe we need a goal scorer. It'd be nice to sign one permanently, wouldn't it? Mm. I know yeah. that's probably asking too much, but, you know. What about you, Dylan? Uh, yeah, I'm the same with Lee. Um, definitely. I think another striker, but a permanent, a permanent young goal scorer. I don't know, but they cost money and not many that's people it. spend spend money in January. But, but what... We, I we, what ten days ago? Ten days ago, if we would have sat here and say, by the eighth of January, we'll have four players in, we'd have all laughed at each other. Do you I know like what I mean? That. So we're 100%. saying now we want a striker in. So we're saying, oh, it'll never happen. They won't be, spend money. They won't do this. We never know. Do you know what I mean? Now we've got Murphy behind the wheel, and you can see exactly what he's doing. And with Cooper, anything's possible. Do you know what I mean? We could, because 
what's it? We get we get branded with new players all the time. Every single day, we're, we're linked with this player, that player, this player, that player. But I would believe if they want a striker, they're going to keep that under the radar. And if they're going to go for a good striker, a young striker, yes, he may cost a bit of money. But when do you go for it? Do you go for them up though? They might get a real gem that we don't even know about. No, exactly. They but... be like that with Larea, for example, he could be a gem, like what they yeah. were saying. Well, they what might do you do? Not like that. What do you do? Do you do you turn around and say, "All right," because <clears throat> we know that Graben's on his last year of his contract. Yeah. Is he going to sign another contract? We don't know. Do you know what I mean? He's getting older. We've got Davis. He's only on loan. Lyle Taylor. I hope he does. I hope Lyle, Lyle stays, but obviously... Yeah. I want him to do well. I always have yeah. done. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. For some but, reason, it's not clicking. But for some reason, and I don't know if everyone agrees with this, but for some reason, when I listened to Dane Murphy the other week in a podcast, he says they were hoping for mid-table, but they're above average now. And you can see that in their signings in January that they're looking at the table going, all right, well, I think we can go for this. So yeah. why why not go now and get a striker instead of waiting till the summer? Do you know what I mean? Because that could be the final piece to the jigsaw to help us push on. That's why it might be another loan until the summer. Just well, because maybe not to commit in case they don't make the playoffs or thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they go for a loan. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I'm I'm just saying his name as a as a as a kind of a player, but you've got the Dwight Gale kind of player, and um mm. you've got him. If you could find someone like him who can score goals, I'm not, we could get promoted. Anything's possible. If we got promoted, if we got promoted, then they are they going to want to go? Well, we've just spent five million on this striker in January, but he don't put the way. Premiership. That the, changes the, everything, doesn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a loan's probably what they'll do. But it's too too many mm -hmm. loans. But how many loans have they got now? Quite a are few. They back to five. Five, we're back to five because Tutu's come back, hasn't it? So, yeah, um, and Davis come. Uh, people, I've put the link in. And you know what? I've, I've never done this before. But like, I've, there's 100 people in. And I know there's, there's me and Liam Dillon, but there's, we've got we've been here for eight minutes. Um, what we'll do, if people want to come in and, and say, like, are you happy with the transfer to, um, play that we brought in? And and as a Forest fan, I know in night, I just want to, if people want to come in and see how they're feeling being a Forest fan as men because... It's, it's, it's good to have different opinions on here. So if you want to come in, I have put the link on so you can. Um, I'll start with you, Lee. Like, we've got Arsenal tomorrow. And would you, would you best play, Lee, for tomorrow? I would have a mix. So you've still got some experience. I mean, for me, I'm not bothered if we win or lose. Obviously, I'd like us to win, but for me, I'd rather concentrate on the league. For me, I don't expect us to win. It's Arsenal, Premier League team, even their B or C side are going to be class, especially at this level. Um, I would have a mix of experience and youth. I, I would try and bring in players like Fauna, players like that, give them a run out, maybe Carvalho. Play, you know, players who aren't getting so much of a look in. Cafu, for example. You know, we, we don't need... A cut run's not really going to benefit us, is it? Let's be no. real. It's not. It'll probably hinder the season more than anything. So, if for me, if we didn't even have to play, I wouldn't bother playing it. But we have to, don't we? So, for, mm. for me, I'd rather just blood some of these youngsters, you know. Well, what about you, Dylan? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with Lee in a kind of way. It's like, you're never going to win the FA Cup. No. Do you know what I mean? But, but the thing is... We need Beating to Arsenal. I, want, I, I personally want to be Arsenal. I'm not gonna lie. I've yeah. got too many, I've well, got too many Arsenal. Got yeah, too many well, Arsenal you've been, you you've been around all week, haven't you? you know what I mean, yeah. you've been here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> but 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 the way I look, you've got to look at it as well is we've um we've not won in the last what we've lost the last lost the last two games. So getting back onto a winning mentality, that's what we need. Do you know what I mean? Regardless if it's in the cup. Yes, we want the league. We want to concentrate on the league. But, do you know what I mean, if we can go out tomorrow, comfortable 2-0 win, do you know what I mean? It only breeds positivity through the team. Do you know what I mean? They missed out. They've had a, they've had a rest because they did play against Barnsley. Do you know what I mean? So, give it a go. Do you know what I mean? But like Lee says, mixture. 
play some of the young lads, play some of the lads who are on the fringe. Because maybe, maybe he might play them, like the likes of Carvalho and that. Mm-hmm. And he may... You know what? I mean, it's, a good thing. it's a good point as well. I think, because everyone talks about Carvalho suited for the Premiership, playing against Arsenal, it could, this could be the kind of game that might suit him. Mm. So, Cavalli could start tomorrow and yeah. prove any like, prove me wrong because I've been a really critical with him. So it could be. Um, but this could be this could be the window for Cooper to go. Do you know what, boys? Here's your chance. All right, I'm not expecting you to come out and win, but just show me what you can do and what your your, your attitude's like. And he might be looking at it and thinking, well, if 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 your attitude's the way I think it is, then I'm getting rid of you. Do you know what I mean? But go, go go and prove yourself or I'm sending you out on loan. Do you know what I mean? Show me why I should keep you around this team. You just want a performance, don't you, really? Yeah, yeah perform. Yeah. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? If, if we lose 1-0 tomorrow... Outside, we lose. Yeah, we lose 1-0 tomorrow, but at the end of the game, we all go, bloody hell, we played well there. Do you know what I mean? Like the last three one, like the, like they're all saying, like uh, they're probably not far wrong. A lot of them have said three one, might be three two, but you know, uh, it's like the last we... game we played. Yeah, the last game. What did we have? Twenty seven shots on twenty three shots. Yeah, twenty three shots. Twenty three shots. Didn't score, but the performance you couldn't knock it. Exactly. So, and everyone went, "Oh, bad day at the office. Let's yeah. go again." Do you know what I mean? We're down the se- uh, beginning of the season. We were playing games like that and not even having a shot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but people, does no one want to come in? Like I said, I've put the link in. So if people want to come in, um, we'll go like in 10 minutes. But um, I've seen like reporting four players. And I'll, I'll ask you, Lee, like who's, who have been impressed so far with this? So like we've secured Spence. I think that was a massive bonus. He's securing Spence. But out of the four players that we've reported so far, who, who have you more impressed with? Um, as well, people comment as well. Not so much impre- like I'm impressed with it all, to be honest. Like, because, like I said, he, he's actually trying to fill the gaps rather than random people that can't play in these positions. You know what I mean? Like, Spence, hopefully, we can get him tied down to a contract at the end of the season. If I but what I've read's true about his contract up, I don't know how true it is. No, okay, he, 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 he hasn't got he hasn't got no clause in it to, so far to sign him. So that's no, but his contract's supposed to run out in the summer, isn't it? Is it not? Well, that's what I read anyway. No, but, but if you listen, if you listen to uh, Chris Wilder's interview yesterday, um, he talks about Jed Spence and he says about leaving him out on loan and that. But he he made a good point. I don't know if anyone realised this, but he went, "The boys told me he's happy. He really wants to stay at Forest. So why would I bring an unhappy player back to Middlesbrough?" Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, so, I read like so what's going to change now to the summer? Do you know what I mean? He's going to go, oh, you're going to have to go back to Middlesbrough. And he's going to be like, I don't want to go back. Do you know what I mean? So is that a possibility? Was that kind of Wilder saying, look, he is a good player. He is our asset. Yes, and if they want him, they can buy him. But they've got to pay. Made, yeah. It, they've got to pay. But if he's, uh, he's made the, he's like kind of told the Middlesbrough fans, I don't want anyone here at this club if they're not happy. Mm. And he, if he might, he might turn around and go. Do you know what? I want to stay with Cooper. He, he's doing, he's doing more miracles. Here, yeah. yeah. For for me though, a shrewd move is Cook because yeah. If we, uh, if we, uh, uh, if yeah. we keep well, a he's not cost us any money. He's cost us a wage. Okay, we're probably going to get rid of Figs or someone else at the back. Okay, um, you're going to have if Warrell stays, you're going to have Cook in the middle. Warrell one side, McKenna on the other. That's going to be solid. And then you've got your wing backs flying up and down. Yeah. You're not going to you get believe, better defense in the championship than that. You're not. Do you yeah. believe? Do you believe? And I, I don't believe that Warrell goes in the January. But no, the I'm way, hoping, the, way, the way Cooper is trying to set this team up, there is no way he's going to bring Cook in and go, all right, we'll sell, sell Warrell. Do you know what I mean? He's he's yeah. he's brought Cook in for a reason, like you say, to play in the middle because McKenna on the left and Warrell on the right. That's where they work best. Do you know what I mean? So mm. why? All right, he's going to eventually go. If we don't get promoted, he is eventually going to go to a Premiership. I think team. we need signings, dear Dylan. I think we are aiming for the playoffs. We might not oh. say it, but they tell me that we're 
they believe we can go for it, that we can get in there. Yeah, well, we're up there now. Uh, yeah. Mm. Just uh, put a little uh, rope together. That's it. Mm. Yeah. I'm just going to comment, uh, and this is regarding our new sign, Richie. Uh, Richie's the best of all confidence at, at his position. Um, but yeah, if there's any Toronto fans, and they are, come on, talk to me, Dylan and Lee. Um, like I said, we've, we've already had two other Toronto fans as well. So, um, as well, if Price fans want to come on, just come on and we'll talk. Um, as well. Um, but like I said, well, last but not least, I've said, um, we'll, we'll finish off with like, like a, with like I said, Forest of Stein, uh, Richie, sorry, I've been, it's been four days, and Dylan's got me, te- he's texting me every day, I said, oh, I'm going out. I'm going <laughs> Are we signed him yet? I'm signed him yet, I'm signed him yet. I, I don't for some know. reason, for some reason, <laughs> I don't know why. It might be because I have a connection to Canada in a way, because I have family out there. Do you know what I mean? But it's I don't know. For you've had some an obsession, reason, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know it it sounds weird, but you're gonna get his name on your top. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? He's gonna do you know what I mean? I think I'm uh Colback's not my favourite anymore. I think the rare is. Do you know what I mean? Uh, oh, you know what? That. You know what? You know what? Like, I, I'm, before we talk about one player before we go, um, four players for seven fifty, great business so far. It's it's fantastic business. Um, so four players bringing in so far. Potentially more. Back, potentially more as well. But, but we're talking about Jack Colback, and he's been good for his left back. But now he's come back into centre midfield alongside Ryan Yates or Garner or whoever. But still, I know you're excited now because. He's back in position now, isn't it? Mr. Colbert. Do you know what? Do you know what? The same thing with the Lorraine thing. You know when Colbert, we first got Colbert, I always wanted Colbert. Yeah. When he, I wanted him permanent and permanent. And, and do you know what I mean? And it's... Uh, uh, Dylan, it's a Dylan, get a Canadian flag down the city ground. Do you know what? When I get down there, I will do. I will do. But, it's contact Forza. Yeah. But do you know what? Do you know what I mean? If if it's true what the Canadian fans have just said, the Toronto fans have just said that that um, Larea has passion and he's, do you know what I mean? Just imagine with him, um, Colback. Do you know what I mean? Colback's got passion. That's why I think I, I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to him now. Is because yes, he gets a, the odd yellow card and you think, oh, here we go again. But he shows passion. So if Larea is the same. If Cook's the same. Spence, he, he does it. Game in, game out, without fail. It's, it's... Uh, yeah, the, the, um, there's another comment um, here, and I know he's been linked or our door. Are you worried about Gardner maybe leaving and going to Everton? Um, Lee, I'm, I'm asking you, are you worried about him no, leaving? Because think... For me, and it's not because I don't like Gardner, I rate him. He's a, he's a good player. Um, I... I think he'll probably stay. Obviously, I, I I don't know the future, but if he does go, I wouldn't be upset. I think we're loaded in midfield. Me and I think me and Dylan, we was on about it the other day, weren't we? You've got yeah. Cafu, Yates, Colbacker, Jada, Fauna. Yeah. And that's about gone. You know what I mean? That's five options. Well, that's amazing. That's it's amazing to thought. amazing to think back in um August time. June, yeah. July, August, set time. Yeah, and we were all there going, come on, let's get Garner, let's get Garner, let's get Garner. We got Garner and we was like, yeah, it's like we won the lottery. But then six, seven months on and we're like, do you know what? If he goes, he goes. Because we've got the likes of Colback. We've got a Jada. We've yeah. got Ryan Yates. We've got we've, All of Fauna. a sudden, we've got an abundance of central midfielders who, who are quite versatile, haven't we? Yeah, so, and, and we've got... And with Garner, he didn't hit the ground running like no, he did last no, season. Recently, though, he, he's been playing no. playing pretty well. Um, yeah, but but we're, the point I'm trying to make is the point. Yeah. Yes, he has picked up now and he's playing the kind of football that we know he can play. But when he wasn't playing that good and he wasn't in the team, like the likes of Colbert, Yates, a Jada coming on, mm. we could see players and go, "Well, do you know what? We we, we can actually fill that position with confidence." I wouldn't be upset if it meant him him going back. Then as loaning a striker with those wages, then a, a decent striker. Then I would take it. I'd accept it. He's got to do what's best for him, Auntie. At the end of the day, so if they want I, to put him and he's I, happy, then I, I personally think that like, he's slowly getting to good form. Yeah. Like last season as well, he, he was all right for us. Um, yeah. But I, I think 
I'll, I'll, I'll keep him because I think he's more he's more forward than Ryan Yates. I know Corbett likes him, but he likes to bomb a little forward now. But I think he's more forward than he's more defensive. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, right, people, it's been fifty minutes, but it's been a fun, another fantastic show. It's been, it's been two shows. I am so tired after the Arsenal preview. This new signing as well. I did not expect it before I was to complete the signing. But um, but yeah. Um, before we do go, I'm, I, I, no, right, should, I, should I get your score picture, or should I wait till tomorrow late for you? Um, I'll wait for, I'll wait for I'll, tomorrow late. I'll be honest, I'm undecided what the score's going to be at the minute. I've got to be honest. Yeah. I'm not. In, in my head, I've got a crazy score of three two to Arsenal, but I want Forest to win, so I'm not really decided yet. Yeah, I think we'll wait tomorrow. We'll wait. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll get mine out. What time's what time kickoff? What, what time's kickoff? Ten past five. I'll, 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 I'll do my prediction at four. Uh, four Ten past four. four eleven. No, no, yeah, no, no. He'll do his four eleven. Four eleven. I'll do my. I'll do my contact for there. But um, people, there's one hundred people in, and it, thank you very much for um, he's watched my first stream today. Um, Dylan and Lee, thank you very much as well for coming on my channel. And as well with Ryan and Sports Toronto Guy, it's been a pleasure. Make sure you do support Nottingham Forest. Um, but people like to please hit the hit the like button. There's 100 people in. Hit the like button. Please hit the like button. It, it, it does me a massive favour. Um, I'll be seeing Lee tomorrow. We're we're at the Arsenal game. Dylan, are you going to the Arsenal game? No, I'm staying at home, mate. Slacking. He's, he's saving himself for Derby. Are the tickets out yeah. yet? <laughs> yes, Dylan. You, Dylan. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't mate. I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to that now. Oh, Dylan, Dylan you've been asking every day for tickets. Oh, right. Right. I've been before waiting for them on general sale. Before we go, Dylan's been asking every single day. Are the double tickets out? The double tickets are on sale, and now we. Last year he was, was asking. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to wait until they get on general sale. No, Dylan, no, I can get you. To, no, no, I'll tell you off camera about it. Right, people. I'm going to go. Um, I, I don't know. Should I do the review show tomorrow? I don't know if, you, I, if I'm in the mood. i do it tomorrow. I might do it Monday. See how I feel. Um, but yeah, people, like I said, the vlog will be out definitely Monday. So um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for all the Forest fans, all the Toronto fans, and like I said, everyone who's come on my channel. Um, I start to cut a short for coming on the Arsenal preview as well. Um, but it's been a pleasure. Lee, Dylan, thank you very much for coming for late notice. And like again, people, Thank you for coming out and all the nasty people. Peace and love. Up the forest. You ready? You ready?